Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Shini here and this is the second part of my the tutorial which I had started last video that is on top 5 most popular interview questions which you can expect for Selenium. So in the first video we have seen a couple of questions and we are going to continue with the remaining 3 questions in this particular video. So if you are new to this channel go ahead and subscribe to it and hit the bell to get notifications of upcoming videos and you can email me at this particular email address if you have any queries or if you want me to take videos on any particular topic. So let's continue with our topic for today, top 5 popular selenium interview questions. So let me continue from where we had stopped last time. So we have seen till here like what are the different ways with which we can basically identify why an element is not getting interactable with respect to in a web application page. So the next particular important question which the interviewer may ask you are what are the common exceptions which are faced by y'all when you are working on a framework? What is the common exceptions which are basically faced by you? Right? So how do you mention that answer and what all answer, what all different exception will you list down? So the most common thing what we can expect on any particular project is element not visible exception. So this comes when a particular element is not visible on the current page, then no such window exception. So you are trying to switch to a window, but that window itself doesn't exist. Or you are trying to switch to a frame, no such frame exception or no such alert exception. So there are like many such common exceptions, no such frame exception. Even you can see we sometimes get an exception with the driver. So we get a web driver exception. So these are the different common exceptions which anyone can face when they are working on any automation framework, right? Or you can also face fail element reference exception. When the element is no longer attached to the DOM, so then you can get this fail element reference exception, right? So these are the common exceptions which anyone can face in Selenium automation framework. So let's continue with the next question. How did you achieve CI in your project? Explain. Also, did you use any versioning tools and which one did you use and how it was useful? So they are indirectly trying to find out, are you aware of CI? What is CI? What is versioning tool? They're not giving you directly the name of such tools. They are just trying to find out from your that, do you know what is CI? Do you know what is different types of versioning tools? So they want you to answer that. CI stands for continuous integration. So you should be aware of this terminologies when you are going and appearing for the interview. It stands for continuous integration. There are different tools to have CI done in your particular framework or project. One of such popular tool is Jenkins. Right? So Jenkins is one such popular continuous integration tool, which when integrated with your framework can give you a lot of benefits. So we are going to discuss about the benefits of CI and how to achieve the integration also. We are going to look at that, right? So CI can be achieved with basically you have to integrate with Jenkins. So for that, there will be a separate video I'll be uploading specifically on Jenkins. But just to give you a brief idea, Jenkins is a CI tool. With Jenkins, you can achieve a lot of activities. You can basically schedule your jobs. Right? Schedule the jobs for your project. Project code. Right? You can basically build your project. You can build your project and you will be getting logs, reports for your test automation run. A lot of benefits are there. Then you can get history of previous builds which were run, that were run on the project. So there are a lot of benefits which you can get with respect to Jenkins. So it's basically like useful for continuous integration. It's also useful for scheduling the jobs and running your automation framework from Jenkins will allow not only just you, anyone, whoever is even, even having any code with them, they also can run the particular automation from Jenkins. They don't have to have that particular project or uh, the code in their local. They can directly run from Jenkins. They just need the access to your particular project that particular job access has to be there with them and they can schedule the uh, build any point of time. They can run the build any point of time. They don't have to depend on anyone. It's basically going to remove the dependency with respect to a particular individual. It's going to keep 
that particular project in cloud and you can expect anyone to run the automation project provided they are given the access for that right and you can also have jenkins delivery pipeline and build pipeline so these are basically some devops terminologies this also helps basically to have like an automated flow of step by step whatever things you want to get done as an automation right there might be some multiple jobs let's say let's say you're having multiple projects I'm just giving an example there are let's say multiple projects one project is dependent on other projects build so once the other projects build is successful then you want your dependent project to be run but you don't want to do all of this manually you would rather want it to be automated as a flow so that is how we can achieve this through jenkins build pipeline it allows such kind of projects to be pipelined in such a way that once one particular project build is done if it is successful it will trigger automatically the build of another project and so on so that's how useful jenkins concept is all over right so that is how you can achieve jenkins continuous integration you have to basically have your project which you are having in eclipse uh, ensure that you mention whatever project path whatever things are there when you install jenkins in your machine everyone needs to have installed the jenkins server in their machine so they can run the war file they can run the war file from their command prompt right and it will trigger your jenkins server to be up and running so of course for everyone jenkins server has to be started jenkins server has to be up and running and they would log in with their user credentials right and the project management team will ensure that that particular project access has been given to the respective user so with which anyone can basically come to that particular project and click on build so i'll anyways cover a separate video on jenkins if you all still haven't got a complete picture so that was the first part of our question that is how do you achieve continuous integration we achieve it with the usage of jenkins and you have to explain about jenkins in short okay now what is the next part so next part was that how also did you use any versioning tools which one did you use so i have personally used from my side svn as well as git and github so these are the popular versioning tools which is available in market today github svn you need to know at least one or two of them because depends on company to company which one they are using so git and github are kind of very similar to each other you don't have to uh, worry much about the differences actually so when you are using git you can basically use some other tools also in conjunction with it those are source tree and bitbucket yeah so source tree and bitbucket tools are the supporting tools which you have to install and you would be able to do versioning of your code so when they are talking about versioning tools they are asking you to explain any of these three tools and how did you do in your project you have to explain that so let's assume that you have you have worked on jit and you're going to explain to them how did you use versioning tool right so i'll just show it in eclipse basically how it is done so let's say that this is the framework right selenium framework i want to ensure that this particular framework is uh, you know stored into a remote repository a remote repository means it's like a remote cloud uh, server or database you could say and we are basically going to sync this local project to there that particular location at cloud so if any of the other team members in my project have to work on the same project right they don't have to ask me give me your project and basically i'll send them a zip file through mail they will extract it etc that is not a good practice at all always it's a good practice to ensure everything is taken from cloud the latest version of your code so for that first you have to store the project into the cloud right so for that you come to your project do right click and do click on team so there is option if you see there is click option called share project click on share project this is one of the way i am just showing you all if you don't have a repository already you can click on create repository and you can basically store the location where you want to do that so basically you can store the repository so i am just going to store it at let's say users shrinivas and i am just going to create a folder here 
and I will just say this one as my lecture. My lecture framework is the repository of the name. So you can create your repository directly like that. This is one of the way. Click on finish. So it's basically now going to store within this particular local repository created. It is going to create a new .jit folder. And for that, the prerequisite, of course, is that you have to install uh, JIT. So let me just show you all. You have to install JIT. Install JIT. You have to install JIT on your Windows or your whatever operating system you're going to use. So you can basically look at this particular website if you want to know the installation. But it's kind of very simple. You can just click on install JIT on Windows. Let us go to this JIT downloads. And yeah, so depending upon your operating system, you can just click on this and follow the normal installation process. JIT will be installed. And you can check after going to the command prompt once the installation is complete that JIT is installed or not. Right. And then you can even use the command prompt to create a repository from command prompt or a JIT repository. You can create a branch, switch to the branch, etc. All those operations you can do. Anyways, I'll be creating a separate lecture again on JIT repository separately. So let's click on finish. Yeah, so now you can see that it has stored this particular project onto a repository called My Lecture Framework, which is not having any head. And you could see there are some question marks shown here. This shows that we have not yet synced our code into a remote repository. So if you want to do any changes, you can just make changes and you can basically sync your code. So there is a JIT staging view here. So it shows you that these all changes are unstaged. So basically you can copy this move to stage, just drag it down to the state changes. Like this, you can drag down. And then you can give a commit message. It should be a one line commit message. Now you can see the color has changed to gray color. And you can say my first commit. And if you want to give some meaningful message, ensure it is within the first couple of lines. New project upload or whatever changes you're going to do. Let's say new file added. Whatever changes you are made to this particular repository, you have to mention that. It should be within first two lines because rest will not be taken up uh, considered. Then you just do commit and push. So it will be pushed to your remote repository. And uh, you have to, of course, give your credentials when you do commit and push. You have to give your uh, entire path, actually, the location of your JIT repository, whatever is the path. So I have to retrieve that. But just to give you an idea, you will be mentioning the complete path here. Only this has to be filled. If you fill the repository path also, I think this repository path is the path of your JIT repository, which you have created the account. Once you give this path, automatically these all remaining details will be populated. You have to provide your username and password and you have to click on finish. That is how your code will be synced to the JIT. So I'll anyways create a separate video on that. So let's continue with the next set of questions. So we have seen versioning tool as well. The fourth one, I'm just going to explain this actually. You can basically practice the different Java programs. And I'll be having a separate playlist started on Java programs. So do watch that particular playlist. It will be very helpful. Uh, they could basically ask you to write a Java program on any of these topics, string class. It could be any question on arrays, whatever uh, programs may require collections to be used. So all of those concepts could be taken into consideration when you are asked to write a Java program. So ensure that you have done thorough practice of Java and you have got some good Java programs practice as well before you appear for any Selenium automation interview, because this is a sure shot question, which any experienced person would be asked to write a program, right? So I've just given a couple of uh, important uh, examples here, like it could be pattern based, like it could be like uh, draw a diamond uh, or draw a triangular asterisk kind of a pattern, right? Or it could be a rectangle, it could be a square, it could be rhombus, it could be any kind of a shape. They may ask you to draw, uh, do some kind of a pattern based programming. So for that, you need to know loops concept, for loop, while loop, all those concepts you need to be thorough with. Factorial of a number is another uh, Im important but easy question. If you want to say series, uh, then you can have a lot of different logic based programs like 
palindrome if a string is a palindrome or not or if it's an anagram like if they will give you couple of strings and they will ask you check if they are anagram of each other or not anagram means that whatever set of characters are there in both if i say a b c d and if i say a c b d if you see the characters combination is same but only the sequence is jumbled right the character sequence is jumbled so but still they are anagram of each other because length is same the characters used also are same so like this kind of different questions you can expect i would be creating a playlist for the same and the last question which i am actually uh, ensuring that i cover in this particular video is what is hoops concept and explain with an example how you have used hoops concept in your framework now the second part is a very big topic actually because i need to explain by creating a project and how in an automation framework it is going to be used but hoops concept let me give you an idea you can even go over my java videos so you have to tell them what are the different hoops concepts in java like class object encapsulation abstraction inheritance polymorphism so again polymorphism we have two types we have compile time run time polymorphism and uh, that is achieved through two ways so first one is method overloading so this is nothing but going to be static or your compile time polymorphism it's a compile time polymorphism then you are going to have method overriding so this is going to be dynamic or also called run time polymorphism so these are the different uh, oops concepts which you are having abstraction inheritance polymorphism encapsulation yeah and of course inheritance we have got many kinds of inheritance we have got hierarchical uh, we've got multi level of course single level is there you cannot have multi all inheritance directly through interface inheritance so for that we use the concept of interface so with that we can achieve multiple inheritance so this is all about the oops concept we have to explain them in detail and you can watch over my video on java to get the explanation of each and every oops concept so in the next particular video we'll be continuing with the remaining topics so i hope you like this particular video do share with your friends and like this video if you have not done yet and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much